my, my first set of slides are going to uh, paint uh, the picture of what I think is wrong. And I, this was very much in my mind as I was diagnosed with uh, lymph node metastasis and suddenly had to realize I was going to have to go through this. So uh, this is a standard practice the world around uh, for metastatic disease patients. Uh, they're started on uh, Lupron or one of the competing products. They may get Casodex. Uh, that works for a while and then it stops uh, and then you get chemotherapy when pain appears or when the PSA goes to 20 or 100 nanograms per mil. It depends on the doctor you're dealing with. And that works for a period of time and then you go to clinical trials, experimental therapy. Um, I don't like that pattern. And what makes me controversial uh, in the field is that I'm trying to provide a, a better path so what's wrong with this? Well, there's a whole thing called second-line hormonal therapy uh, that's not being used. And the second-line hormonal therapy is less toxic than chemotherapy. Some patients can have responses that last for years. And this isn't my stuff. This is stuff that's been published since 1980. So this isn't Dr. Myers. This is out there for all medical oncologists and urologists to know about. Some of these responses last for years. Even if it doesn't last for years, it can reduce the total amount of cancer so chemotherapy can have an easier job knocking the cancer down. Uh, I also think it's a big mistake to wait until the patient has pain or until the PSA hits 100 before you start aggressive treatment because it, more cancer is never better than less. Uh, when you're dealing with an agent like chemotherapy, which, while toxic, isn't all that powerful, it does a much poorer job when there's a large amount of cancer on board than when there's a small amount. So starting early is always better. So I, that's what I don't like about that. Now, what, what happens when you do things the, the routine way? And uh, the top curve shows a typical uh, survival curve uh, on the horizontal on the vertical axis is the percent of people alive, and it starts at 100% at zero months. And as the months pass, you see patients die. And so with the routine management, by the time you hit 33 months, you're down around 10 to 20% of the patients left alive. That isn't even three years yet. So below, I, I, before I came over here, I, I pulled together all the patients that I treated for the last five years with um, the, the second line hormonal therapy before uh, chemotherapy. Uh, this is our survival curve. Now, and at 33 months, we've got 80% uh, of my patients alive versus 20%. But furthermore, we're, we're above 70% out to five years. So that's a very, very different outcome. And as you see, I'm not using uh, secret tools that are only available in Charlottesville, but agents that in some cases have been around for 40 or 50 years. So probably what, what's most unique about um, our approach is that we do a try and get a complete remission. We can get complete remissions, not in everyone, but in, in, a, in a sizable number of patients. And I feel that every patient with metastatic disease deserves a, a legitimate try at getting them in complete remission. Why? Because if you make the PSA fall to less than 0.01 and have the bone scan show the bones that heal, uh, it's fairly easy to keep that cancer in check for years. 